All right, what's going on guys? Today we're changing these spark plugs on my Audi S4. Now, it's been a week since this car has been started, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little cold start real quick, and then we'll get right into the spark plug installation. All right, so as you guys just heard, the car is sounding absolutely amazing. And I just took it for a spin to it as peppy as ever. I'm thinking with these new spark plugs, we'll give you more, give you more performance out of the car, you know? So getting into the spark plug installation, there's a few things you have to do. You actually have to take off the intake as well as the, the um, coolant reservoir to actually move things around to get to the actual spark plug and coil pack section of the vehicle. So what I have here is just a torque wrench, uh, some spark plugs. These are the Bosch spark plugs. I believe the B8 has Bosch, the B8.5 has NG case bar plugs. Also have our 5 8 extensions and ratchets and things like that. So dielectric grease. And this is pretty much all you need to get the job done. I'll leave a link in the description below of all the tools I'm using today. But let's go ahead and pop the hood real quick. All right, so we got the hood up and it is filthy in here. There's crud everywhere. We've got a bunch of acorns sitting in the top of the engine. So up out of here real quick and if you guys know from previous videos um <clears throat> my hood strut is actually broken so i use this clamp to hold everything up and i'll replace this eventually it's like 30 bucks to fix but uh got other things to worry about right now so yeah, for the main thing i gotta do is take off this little intake pipe right here just one two screws comes on out and that gives you access to your coal packs right in this area and then for this side we gotta take off the coolant reservoir to get space to actually slide this back now, it looks like you have space to slide it back, so maybe I don't have to. I'm not entirely sure yet, but they suggest you unscrew these two bolts right here, <clears throat> lift the reservoir up, and also undo one of the sensors at the bottom of the reservoir. So we'll see if we need to do that at all. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take a flathead, just remove the air intake real quick. So this is a aftermarket intake, if you can't tell, and it's way easier to get this off than the regular intakes. So for this one, unscrew here, here, slide it right on off, and you're good. For other ones, you might have to unbolt here, 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 a bunch of other things, but this one's simple. So got the intake off, and you can see the throttle body right here on top, very easy to access. And from close inspection, it looks pretty decent, no carbon buildup, so that's pretty good. And there's also this vacuum line right here on the intake that needs to be plugged in as well. So make sure you don't forget about that one. So we can also remove this part right here as well. This just slides right up and out to give us a little bit more space. So I probably do this with one hand. So there we go. Just like that, there we go. Two grommets, sits right up in there. So now we have full access to the spark plugs and ignition coils. And that side's a tad bit more difficult, but we'll do this side for example right now. So next step we need to do is take a Torx bit and get out these two screws right here. These should be T8s. Okay, so scratch that, it's a T20 Torx bit. And luckily I have a T20 on hand. All right, so take your screwdriver and your T20 and these should just slide right on out. All right, so now that those are out, next thing we'll do is slide off the rail right here. So these kind of just slide right on back off of each coil pack. See if I can do that real quick. I might get a flathead and just slide it back, actually. Here we go. See if I can just break it loose real quick. Yep, yeah, so you can see it slide back. I slide it on back. And then this one as well should slide back. There we go. So now that the rail is loose, you can actually slide these cold packs up be careful your engine may be pretty hot so touch it with my hand yeah the blocky is hot <laughs> all i'm gonna do is try to wiggle them out real quick left right left right and actually what i want to do is actually mark each of these first so one two three four five six so i know exactly what it came out of all right there we go i marked them all up we have one two three Four, five, six on that side. I think that's how the, I think that's how it's configured. But you know, just for reference, for me, one, two, three, four, five, six. Also, put a little towel over the the throttle body, make sure nothing gets in there. But as I was saying before, slide the rail back, and these 
just work with it a little bit and it should come out. You can actually take a little pry tool, pry it up first, and then go ahead and wiggle it on out. Get the rail completely out the way. There we go. It slides on up. Same with this one here. Just wiggle it. Put some force on there. Slides up. Same with this one. Wiggle it. Put some force on there. And the dielectric grease that we're going to put on later on helps with the uh, making sure they come out easier next time and helps prevent corrosion and things like that. So once you have it at this point, you can slide the rail almost completely back and just try to lift them on up out of there. So, so to get the spark plug, I'm gonna need five eighths uh, attachment right here. Also gonna need your ratchet. So grab this real quick. Perfect, all right, you got your ratchet, your ratchet extension. That's a five eighths, like I said before. Come over here, go ahead, slide it into the chamber right here. All you do is just untighten it. And untighten it. And usually with a spark plug socket like this one once was, it has a rubber uh, tip in there that actually grips onto the spark plug. But if you don't have that, take your ignition coil, slide it back in there, and now grip onto your spark plug and just pull it right on out. So let's see if that works. Just push down a little bit and and just like that, the spark plug comes right on out of there. And if you just drove your car, this spark plug is scorching hot. So make sure you use a towel to actually pull it off there so you don't burn yourself. All right, so we got all the spark plugs out. Next thing you do is you replace them with the new spark plugs. And I believe these are, these are actually NGK plugs. So I read online that the B8 had the Bosch plugs and the B8.5 NGK, but I mean, either one should work. They're both good quality spark plugs, but we're going with Bosch this time around to see how that works. If anything happens, we'll go back to NGK, but these boss should work just fine. But take your fresh spark plug, you can go ahead and unwrap it. Now you put some dielectric grease along the edges here to make it easier to come out later on. You just need like the slightest amount to put on there. So and this is a little bag of dielectric grease. This will last you forever, this little small amount right here, because you don't need much of this stuff at all. I'm just taking just the bare minimum and just kind of going around it real quick. And you can kind of do the same thing to get your spark plugs back in there, kind of just hang it on sort of like that. Now all you gotta do is just slide it in. So try to get it all the way down. So sorry for the background noise, but I got all the spark plugs in each chamber. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them down, hand tighten them first. And each of these spark plugs are already pre-gapped. Link on Amazon, got these probably about eight bucks a piece. So check them out. All right, so now that I have all the plugs kind of hand tied in there, I'm gonna take my torque wrench and I'm going to tighten them down to about 22, uh, 22 foot pounds of torque. I'm probably doing like about 20 foot pounds of torque so I don't like damage them. I'm going to grab our trusty torque wrench. So I have it set to about 21 foot pounds of torque. We're gonna see how that goes for us. You guys also wanna check out this torque wrench link in the description below, it's on Amazon. And these links are affiliated. They help me kind of pay for all the work I do to this car and other things like that. So definitely check it out on Amazon. And it should be 28 newton meters or 21 foot pounds of torque for the spark plugs on the Audi S4 V8. So go ahead and slide this on in there. There we go. And we'll just torque it. Make sure this is still to that spec. 21 pounds. All right, so these are all torqued down to 21 foot pounds. Last thing we want to do is get our ignition coils, put some dielectric grease on them, and also slide this back on. So now with our ignition coils, we're gonna take some dielectric grease right here. I'll link this in the description below as well, but these might be, these are actually, I think, free at AutoZone. They kind of just gave this to me. It's a little small sample pack, I believe, but this will last you forever. So all you want to do is take a little bit on your finger Hopefully your ignition coils aren't still hot, but literally just rub it on the inside of here just like that. And you just need the lightest amount. And this is pretty much anti-seize. It prevents the uh, ignition coil from getting stuck on top of your spark plug, causing other issues when you're removing them. So tab it just like that. All I want to do is slide it down in there. And then once it's sitting on top of the spark plug, all you want to do is move it around like this. This gets the dielectric grease coated all around it so 
Just makes it easier to remove next time around. And do the same thing with the rest of them. So at this point, we're just doing everything in reverse. So all we wanna do is slide our rail back onto the ignition coils. If you guys wanna know as well, these it's like the same process for most Audis in this uh, era to B8s and B8.5s. Same fuel rail, same setup. So literally all just slide off just like that. Go ahead and push everything down just like that. And then simply slide your rail back on so and make sure everything's on nice tight and snug or you get a bunch of misfires and error codes so if that does happen you start your car you have to take engine light come back take it apart do it again and you know you've done a good job when your rail lines up with the holes exactly if these don't line up take it apart do it again take your torque screws slide these back on in there and there's no torque specs on these bolts right here so just tie them down hand tighten them, don't strip them. These are pretty weak bolts. And now we have one side successfully completed. So this next side is a tad bit trickier. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the coolant reservoir and make things much easier for myself. So we're gonna take a 10 millimeter socket wrench and I have to push these lines out the way a tad bit to get to them, it's pretty tight space, but uh, it shouldn't be too bad, so. That's this one we use as well. So we gotta take this off first. Release from this pressure. Use a towel because it could be hot. There we go. All right. So next thing you wanna do is actually disconnect a little cord at the bottom right of this uh, coolant reservoir. So let's see if we can find that. Yep. Literally just push that down, and it's off. And that is for the coolant sensor. So move that out the way. Once that's off, this should just slide right on up. Yep. There we go. All right, so getting to these torques uh, bits right here is the most difficult part of this job. So we're gonna try to make it work. All right, so since the screwdriver didn't work, I just took some uh, clamps right here clamped it on and we're gonna see this actually work so we can do it if it falls into the engine again it's just like dang you know i just want to stop for the day you know all right finally got all the torx bits off the slide the fuel roll back pop these off and do the same process as that side as well and after her inspection yes you do need to take this off and loosen it because these coals will not clear without this being able to move to the side a little bit so all right, so I got the intake back on, got the reservoir back on, tightened down, read the valve here. And last thing we're gonna do is make sure you put your other vacuum line back on right here in the back. Attach this onto here. You should have something similar on the stock intake as well. So make sure you put this one back on, it slides on like that. Now you just cross your fingers and hope you didn't mess anything up because this is a lot to undo. And you go ahead and start the car up. So the car is working just fine. If you guys want to see where to get all these tools at, link in the description below. Dilate your grease. The, um, got the torque wrench, the 5-inch attachment. Uh, you need a T20, so go one down. 6-inch extension, and then just your regular tools. And that's literally it. I'll show you where to get the spark plugs at as well. These are from Amazon. $8 on Amazon. They're like 15 bucks in store, I believe. So they take a little minute to ship, but once they're here, you know, save you a bunch of money. All right, so that took me about an hour. It should take about 30 minutes at most, but I had some mishaps. I dropped uh, some things inside the chamber and a lot of a lot of things happened. So if that doesn't happen, it's about a 30 minute job in total. It's some um, tight space to work in, but that's about it. It's not too bad at all. But if you guys wanna see where to get all these tools at, link in the description below. If you haven't already yet, like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content on Audis, other German cars. I do a lot of things like that. I bought this Audi S4 at auction. I'm currently rebuilding it. So if you guys wanna check that out, go ahead and follow my channel to see more progress on this Audi S4. There's a lot of things that I have to do to get done on this car. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below. Other than that, thanks for watching.